So as Annalise mentioned, I'm Kelly. I'm the senior product manager here at um, Code for America working on Get Refund. And I'm super excited to present with my colleagues here, um, Get Your Refund as it is today. So right now I'm on the demo site and I'm gonna walk through and try to breeze through um, the demo site so you guys can get a high level picture of what the client goes through when they're um, working through getyourrefund.org. Um, and then just a note, this is a demo, so you can actually go to demo.getyourrefund.org and fill out the demo yourself if you'd like to try it out um, and get a sense of what comes from the, uh, what the client sees. Um, sometimes we do release features a little earlier to demo as we're testing them, so just note there might be some variance um, on demo versus production, um, but if you'd like to try it out, you are welcome to. Um, so clients will first start at our um, demo site, or at first they'll start at the production site, and they will start by getting started. Um, and these pages will soon be where that triage that um, Annalise mentioned, but right now we just ask them, how are you feeling about your taxes? And this is sort of to get at the human aspect of, um, of you know, tax filing is hard and we want to help you through it. Um, and once the filer starts online, we first ask for what years you need to file for. Um, we ask this because we do help um, clients with back taxes. So we um, ask which year they'd like to file for, and then based on the year they choose, um, we then ask for um, all the questions related to that year. I'm gonna go through 2019 though. Um, and then getting started. Um, we also ask for a couple eligibility things. So we want to make sure that the client is eligible for VITA services. We know there are some other things that may make them ineligible, which um, we can work with a client individually to say, sorry, we can't work with you. Um, but these are the big ones. So the client can then say, you know, I have none of the above. And then we give them a quick overview of what the process is like. So we want to let them know they're going to need to answer questions, submit documents. Um, they're going to have to talk on the phone. So later we'll talk about the process with the filer, but um, it does include filling out this intake form. Um, it will require them to get on the phone and talk through their situation with a VITA site. VITA will do their preparation, and then um, there's a final phone review before a consent and um, consent to e-file and filing. Um, so first we ask for some basic information. We ask for the client's preferred name and their state of residence. Um, right now we um, route folks based on either a unique link that we'll provide you and that will help you get your VITA sites um, to our site and directly to you. We also, if someone just comes to getrefund.org, we route them based on, um, we can also route based on the state of the return. Um, so in this case, I'll put California. Um, and then here we remind them that our team is here to help. Um, they can use this chat button down here. Right now it says help. When someone's on live chat, it'll say chat. Um, we have some folks centrally uh, overseeing the live chat and we have pretty good coverage throughout the week um, and some evening coverage as well. Um, note, we may tap you guys to help provide some resources on the chat. We get a lot of questions around um, just general tax and eligibility, eligibility questions. We also get questions from folks who are sort of in the questions and are wondering how to answer certain things. Um, and so we might ask that um, you guys join in on that. We can't actually filter it to be just your um, clients. It would be anyone that visited the site. Um, but we're seeing a lot of really great success with um, supporting people through the live chat. Um, then, as I said, we do ask for a contact phone number. I'm going to put in a fake phone number. Um, and this is the phone number that we'll use to, um, that we'll use to give the tax preparer a call. Um, sorry, we'll give to use to give the client a call. Um, we do ask if this number can receive text messages because we know that someone might just have a landline. Um, so you can say that the client can, can or cannot receive um, text messages. Um, and then we also ask for an email address. Um, I do a, um, here, I'll do demo. So um, if you're going to be filling out the demo more than once, you can make your uh, email address unique if you have a Gmail address by adding this plus sign. So it's a little trick I use for um, testing things and it helps you kind of highlight that um, this is actually a demo test. It will just send to K McBride at Code for America. Um, and then we ask for an email address because at the end uh, we will send the completed return and um, the consent to e-file form through DocuSign. Um, so that's a secure way to send the documents to the um, client at the end. So we need an email address for that. 
And then after that, we ask how we can update you on your tax return. So someone can either say email me or text me. Um, I'll say email me and this is what goes into Zendesk, which I'll show you later, which um, determines how we actually send communications out to the client. So if they say email, we'll send um, any communication from the tax filer or from the tax preparer to um, email. If we send, uh, if we say text messaging is okay, we also send text messages. And then finally, um, before we send someone over to a preparer, we ask for, um, for a consent from the filer. So this is outlining what the VITA process is. You'll see that we um, are using this in place of the 14446 um, consent form. So it outlines what, what the process is that you're gonna need to get on the phone, you're gonna need to email, and you need to prepare, or you need to provide information for the filer or for the um, preparer to actually prepare your taxes. Um, if you have additional forms that you use um, at your site for consent, you can send those through DocuSign to the filer um, when you get um, when you get to that point with them. Uh, but this is our um, consent form that we've worked with IRS Spec to um, get approved. So now here's where we would ask for their legal name, the last four of their social, and their birth date. Which I'm just going to pick random numbers here. Um, and for this, this is actually what we put on the consent form and we do when we send this to Zendesk. When they click I agree, we now are sending, um, we'll send this over to our Zendesk system that Ray's going to walk us through and it will have an attachment with the consent form, um, a PDF with their digital signature because they said I agree. Um, and it also includes their um, communication preferences and that's actually when um, We'll talk about this in the Zendesk section, but where you could actually reach out to someone that might look like they're stuck um, to follow up with them. So now I'm going to try to breeze through the questions, but these are all the questions that are on the um, 13614C. Um, and we also have the ability to add um, help text. The reason we have this on each individual page is it's really easy to use either on a mobile phone or a desktop phone. Um, we also ask if you've ever been legally married. Um, if you say yes, we ask you some questions about relating to marriage. If you say no, we skip them. We also ask if you might be filing joint. Um, if you wanna claim someone, we have the ability to add a dependent. Um, and those are the same questions that are on the 13614C. Um, you, um, we ask other questions here. And again, as I said, this is, um, we found pretty easy to do on a phone or on a desktop, especially having one question per page. We ask how many jobs, um, which states you live and work. And as I breeze through this, um, Annalise, do you have anything to add on what I may have missed? <laughs> um I think one of the things just to note here is that the um, language that we're using here, we're constantly evolving it in order to make the questions clearer to clients. So a lot of the benefit here is filling out the forms that clients would typically fill out as part of VITA intake, but asking the question in slightly different ways so that they um, are hopefully able to answer the questions correctly without a lot of guidance. And um, we have a wonderful user research team that is constantly helping us engage clients, understand where they're getting stuck. Um, we use data from when they click on that help button to understand the frequently asked questions and to try to reword things to get things right. So this is a piece of the tool that is constantly evolving and getting better and better. Yeah, and I would actually add that we are constantly evolving all parts of the tool. We <laughs> love hearing feedback from our partners and from clients, um, and we're always thinking about how we can make it easier for both the VITA side and the client side. And um, we have a lot of updates we would love to make and are trying to, to get them all in to help support you guys. Um, great, so after all the yes, no questions, and again, if I didn't mention, this will actually populate the 13614C and attach that to Zendesk so your preparers don't have to learn a whole new um, method of gathering information. We also ask for um, any information um, in the test or in the, um, that you might need to know about the tech situation. Um, and then from there, this is where we get to the document stage. So we give a little primer saying, we're gonna now ask for your, um, some documents from you. And we're also gonna need to make sure you have a phone number and email that work. Um, and then first we're gonna start with verifying identity. So um, the IRS recently released um, guidelines around identity verification. And so we took that to um, build our identity verification option, which asks the filer to upload 
a photo of their ID card. So it's either an ID card, a license, a passport, some form of identification. Um, we also ask for a photo of a social security card or ITIN paperwork. And then we also ask that the um, client takes a photo of themselves while they're holding their IDs. So that helps um, mimic what you would do in, in a um, in-person by site. So you would check the ID, check the social security card or ITIN paperwork, and then make sure that the person is actually in possession of the ID and um, is the person on the ID using that photo of them. Um, we also here note that their information is secure and, um, and we have a privacy policy that you all can link to to see sort of how we uh, manage data, but we save it all in a very secure encrypted place. And we want to let the clients know that we're we're um, handling their data safely. Um, so then for the photo of the ID card, um, we then ask that they upload a photo. I'm just gonna put a demo photo. Um, and we actually require these photos. Um, and we also ask if I had said that I had a spouse, this would also say my spouse's name here. So we do require um, this identity information for both the primary filer and the spouse. Um, and then we ask them to confirm their ID with the selfie. This gives a little details around um, how to take a selfie and what should be in it. And then we ask for a photo of them with their ID card. And then we ask for the oops, social card and you'll see it's required. Um, and then to note here, these can be uploaded either on a phone, um, mobile device, or desktop. So here on the desktop, you can see that it's asking me to select a file. If I were on my mobile phone, it would ask me, um, you would click um, the button and it would either allow you to take a photo right there or upload something that's in your photo library. Um, and then now we ask for documents. So this is based on those questions I answered, yes, no. And it will say, um, these are the documents we think you might have based on your answers. And then we ask them to upload from there. Um, so for example, it's not asking me for a W-2 because I answered, I think, no to almost everything, including the, I have no jobs. Um, and then for each page, we'll ask, um, please attach this document. And then we give a little bit of description around this. Again, like Annalise said, this is always something we're looking to um, improve upon. So we would then upload a document and then they can either say, I'm done to move on. Or we have also seen, um, Folks may just not have a document either because they don't have it with them or because it's not necessarily a required document. We know there are some questions on the 13614C that might mean you, you might have something or you might not. So you can add a document or say you don't have it. Um, and we also give the option to add additional documents. We know that um, folks often come to Vita sites with all their documents they think might be relevant. So we give them um, an option to share them here. And we give a final list of here's everything that you uploaded to us. And then we ask for um, time preferences for your interview. We ask them to provide two to three times that they're available so that we can um, work on um, giving them that call at a time that works for them. We ask for a couple um, options because we may need to call them. Um, so you could say Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Um, and then again, these are more questions um, around whether someone uses um, direct deposit, um, options to, um, same options as are on the current PDF form. Um, and then we ask for a mailing address. Do note that um, right now we don't have in here the ability to ask for direct deposit information, but that is coming soon, probably Monday or Tuesday. Um, and then we finally ask if we are willing to answer some additional questions to help serve you better. Those are the questions at the bottom of the um, 13614C that are demographic questions. So they can either answer them or skip. And then finally, we ask if there's anything else you would like to know. Nothing else. And they can submit. And then we will then send them a confirmation message and it gets sent into Zendesk.